Hello and welcome to Quincy Access Television's second mayoral debate for the upcoming November 7th election between incumbent mayor Thomas Koch and challenger Councilor at Large Ann Mahoney. My name is Jonathan Caleri, the executive director of Quincy Access Television, and I'll be serving as the moderator for tonight's debate. Tonight's debate is being held in front of a live audience at Quincy High School and also being shown live on QATV Channel 8, QATV HD 1072, and online at QATV.org. I want to thank the candidates, thank our panel of reporters, thank our audience here at Quincy High School, and our viewers at home for joining us here this evening. I'd also like to thank Kevin Mulvey, Superintendent of Quincy Public Schools, Laura Owens, Assistant to the Superintendent, and Keith Ford, Principal of Quincy High School, for their assistance and hospitality in allowing QATV to host a debate here tonight at Quincy High School. Let's now meet our panel of reporters who will be asking questions of the candidates tonight. First, from Quincy Access Television, Joe Catalano. Next, from the Quincy Sun, Scott Jackson. And from the Patriot Ledger, Peter Blandino. We thank all three of you gentlemen for being of our panel here tonight. Tonight's debate will follow the guidelines and format agreed upon by both candidates. Each candidate will deliver an opening statement, followed by a round of questions from our reporter panel. Each candidate will then ask a question of their opponent, followed by a second round of questions from our panel. Finally, each candidate will deliver a closing statement. The order of statements tonight will be in the reverse order of the first debate that was held at QATV on September 25th. Our timekeeper down in the front row of the audience will keep track of the candidate's responses and notify each candidate when there is 10 seconds remaining and when time has expired. Each candidate will also have an opportunity to use a bonus rebuttal time of 30 seconds once this evening. I remind both our candidates to let me know when you'd like to use that here this evening. Finally, I ask our audience here at Quincy High School to refrain from applause during the debate out of respect for both of our candidates. We will now begin with our opening statements. Mayor Koch, you are first up and you have two minutes. Thank you, Jonathan, and thank you to the folks at QAT for putting this together tonight, certainly our panelists. Uh, first and foremost, I certainly want to, again, extend my personal deep sympathy to Council Mahoney with the recent loss of her mother, Mary Mulligan. Secondly, I'd like to mention, you know, we are experiencing the great democratic republic here in the U.S. And we've witnessed around the world, a very troubled world, the war in the Ukraine, and this past weekend, the amazing terrorist attack in Israel. In addition, we have men and women serving all across the country, and the world for that matter, many from Quincy, Mass, men and women donning the uniform, to protect us. So let us be mindful of them tonight, whatever your faith tradition, maybe say a prayer for each of them tonight. Tonight, we're gonna to have a discussion about some of the issues facing our city. I'm very proud of the record of accomplishment my administration has. We can talk about new schools, new parks, new roads, new seawalls, upgrades virtually in every aspect of the infrastructure of our old city. And I work with some tremendous people each and every day. They put it together. I'm grateful for the folks along the way this year in the campaign season as they've been out in public knocking doors and meeting and greeting and listening to the concerns of the people of Quincy. I have a great record to stand on, but elections are about the future. So tonight we'll be talking about some of those challenges and issues, and I look forward to the debate tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> Council Mahoney, you have two minutes. Thank you very much. I'd like to start by thanking you, John, and our panels, QATV, the Quincy Sun, and the Patriot Ledger for being here, all of the audience, and the people who are tuning in at home. I'm Ann Mahoney, I'm a counselor at large. I'm a former school committee member, former small business owner, but most importantly, I'm a lifelong Quincy resident. During my time in public office, I stood up for wasteful spending to make sure that your tax dollars were working for you. I fought against overdevelopment that was hurting our neighborhoods, and I fiercely advocated for the funding, the full funding, of our public schools so that every child can get a fair and equitable education. I'm running for office because of these issues and many more issues that are facing our community day in and day out so that everybody in our community can thrive. I've been at your doors, I've been on the phones, I've been at your community events, and we've talked about the opportunities and challenges that are facing our city. 
I believe that I can meet the needs of our city when I'm your mayor and we can face those challenges head on. From affordability so that our young families can put down roots here in the city of Quincy and that our seniors can age with grace. To smart development so that we're meeting the needs of our community and also the amenities that we've been waiting for for so long. The infrastructure and our transit needs so that we can move in our city and we can use our MBTA, the very reason why many people choose to come and live here in Quincy. And the day-to-day, -day, the bread and butter of our community, your services from the police, the fire, to the teachers, to the everyday and weekly services that you've gotten accustomed to, and our local main streets and the local economy making sure those thrive. These are, the these are the things that we've talked about when I've been at your doors and in your community when we're discussing these things. These are the things that I'm hoping we'll be discussing about here tonight, and I hope I can earn your vote between now and November 7th so that I can be your next mayor. Thank you. Th Thank you, Councilor Mahoney. We'll now begin with our first round of questions from our panel of reporters. Each candidate will have two minutes to respond, followed by a 30-second rebuttal provided to the initial candidate. Our first question will come from Joe Catalano of Quincy Access Television for a question for Mayor Koch. Mayor, uh, Councillor Mahoney has called for the implementation of a third-party software system to provide the public access to detailed financial information about government spending. Would you support that if re-elected? And do you feel the current budgetary process in the city is transparent for taxpayers to understand how their money is being spent? Well, first of all, we have a mayor council form of government. So each and every year, I have to present a full budget before the city council. Every department manager and department head stands before the city council and answers for every line item in that budget. The school side's a little different. As a member of the school committee, the council approves the bottom line, but the school committee makes decisions on the detail of the budget. We also have that budget up online. And over the years, I've actually had public hearings uh, on the budgets that we have presented. Uh, I'd be happy to be even more transparent in any particular way uh, to make it easier for folks to weigh in and listen. But we operate each year on a budget that has to be balanced, unlike uh, the other levels of government. And I think we have a very robust discussion each and every spring uh, before the city council. And so I'm, I'm very proud of the work we've done and along those lines, the work we've done has brought incredible stability to our budget. We enjoy one of the highest rates out there for bonds. That's not by accident. We've worked extremely hard to deal with the structural deficits that we inherited uh, and all those items that were pushed off and kind of kicked the can down the road. One of the major ones was the pension obligation bond, uh, which we enacted last year. Uh, through the vote of the City Council, which over the next 17 years is going to save the taxpayers of Quincy $130 million. Uh, those are real numbers. That's, those are decisions we made that were lauded by national financial folks uh, and called it a genius moment. We did that when the interest rates were historically low, uh, and now we've seen the rates change. It was a brilliant move, and I thank the City Council members that did support it. My, my opponent did not. I'm over the last several months talking to and working with other communities to learn how they're doing their budgets. What I can tell you is that in the city of Quincy, we're provided a big, and it's a PDF. What we can do and what we will do when I become your mayor is we will use the software that the city currently pays for but doesn't use called ClearGov, and we will put that budget online, and you will be able to see transparently where our budget's being created, how our capital improvement projects are being spent, when they're starting, where they are, and if we're having problems, and when they're going to be completed, so that you, the taxpayers of the city of Quincy, will know where your tax dollars are going. It's an important process. It builds trust back in our government. It's something that we need and other communities are doing, and we should be doing it now. It's smart developing, it's smart budgeting, and it's making sure that people know what's happening within our community. I do want to mention one thing. I am very proud that I actually had the discussions about the pension bond. However, we got to be able to have Peric actually do the investment for that bond. 
The reason why that was so important was because in the retirement board, the, the, the investment group that we were working with were coming in under and not achieving the goals of the investment. What I had asked was to take that funding as well as the pension obligation bond and have Peric invest it. Now what happened after that bond was sold, and no, no clue to anybody in the city, $3.5 million was stolen from the, from, the, from the retirement board underneath this administration. That was underneath our email that was used by the retirement board and it has never been recovered. The Peric report came back and put a spotlight on the city of Quincy for not actually having the right, the right structure in place to be able to protect our tax dollars. My fear is that we're going to actually have another unfunded pension obligation bond in the future. Mayor Koch, 30 seconds. The reality on that is you voted against a pure math equation that is going to save the taxpayers of this city $130 million over the next 17 years. Uh, that is a fact. It's not a policy disagreement. It's pure math. For someone that is so interested in the taxpayers, I think that is a vote that you blew. Our next question will come from Scott Jackson of the Quincy Sun. Please, thank you. Our next question will come from Scott Jackson of the Quincy Sun with a question for Councillor Mahoney. Councillor Mahoney, would you support making appointments to boards like the Planning Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals subject to confirmation by the City Council like they are in communities like Braintree and Boston? The Conservation and the ZBA? Uh, planning. Planning. But I actually, I think that's something that we absolutely have to review. Because right now, these boards are appointed by a strong form of mayor. And the issue that I have with that is that when the community has problems and goes to those boards, if it's something that the developer wants, and this administration has taken lots of money from developers, you could have a million people come up and speak passionately, eloquently, and rationally about the things that they are concerned about and should be taken into consideration. And these boards approve it anyway. Those are the concerns that I have. So when I am mayor, what I can promise you is that there'll be limits, term limits for the people that are staying on those boards, that we will make sure that we'll look to the best way that we can actually bring those people onto our boards. And I do think the city council, if it's not going to be a PUD, then the city council should absolutely have weigh in on who's going to be sitting on those boards as well. Because that makes the representation equal to the residents of the city of Quincy and it makes the developers have to be accountable to more than just those boards and the administration. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Mayor Koch, two minutes. Well, first of all, there's uh, more than 180 members of boards and commissions in our city. They serve without compensation. Uh, I want to thank them for the incredible public service that they provide each and every day. Uh, whether it's planning board, zoning board, conservation, park and rec board, cemetery board, and a number of commissions, uh, these people do give it their all, so I first of all want to thank them. I don't think the system is broken. I'm certainly open. Uh, I have one appointment to the retirement board, as does the city council. Each of the appointments to the housing authority get confirmed uh, by the city council. Um, as far as the, the uh, mention of taking money from developers, um, I take uh, donations from folks at all levels, including 130 small business owners in Quincy have donated to my campaign. Uh, contractors, engineers, citizens, firefighters, police officers, even teachers have donated to my can campaign, and I'm very, very proud of that. We follow the rules and guidelines for the Office of Campaign Political Finance, uh, and that's a very transparent. You can go online and check all of that out at any time. Uh, I'm certainly open to discussing with the City Council uh, if they wish to make some changes, it would be a change to the charter, which would require legislative approval as well. It wouldn't just be a local change because we do have a plan A form of government uh, in, in the city of Quincy. Thank you, Mayor. Councilor, 30 seconds rebuttal. Thank you very much. I'm going to repeat, this is a strong form of mayor. There are many people who do standouts who donate to this campaign because they're fearful of their jobs. And I know that because some of the people who work for you have told me. It's very interesting, the conversations that I have at grocery stores and around the city, 
because there are some people who are very fearful that if they put a lawn sign on their yard that is not your name, that it might hurt them. So I would say that we absolutely Thank have you, to Councilor. go back and review these things. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Our next question will come from Peter Blandino of the Patriot Ledger with a question for Mayor Koch. Mayor, um, you've said that the primary role of city government is to educate the children of, of Quincy. Um, this year, the Quincy Education Association, whose endorsement you had in 2019, um, you, you don't have this year. Um, in fact, it's gone to your opponent. Um, why do you think you lost the support uh, that you had in 2019, and do you think there's anything you need to do or that you could do to restore that relationship? Well, first of all, uh, I've said the primary role of government is educating our kids after public safety. You have to have uh, safety in your city and your person and your property. Feel have, people have to feel safe, and that's the primary role of government. If you don't have that, nothing else truly matters. I've enjoyed the endorsement of the teachers' union for, uh, six out of my seven elections. What has changed? The leadership of the QEA has changed. What I'm proud of is the police and firefighter unions, every one of them get a vote on who they want to endorse. The teachers' union is made by four officers at the upper level. I believe the teachers' union has been led by the MTA, who has a very strong political agenda, uh, and that's unfortunate. Negotiations went very, uh, uh, they were spirited on both sides. I'm a member, along with the other school committee members, to work on these um, negotiations with all of the schools, all the school contracts. Uh, my HR department on the city side handles the city side contracts, uh, and uh, everything went very, very well. Uh, it's difficult to negotiate uh, under certain circumstances. In previous years, we leaned down both sides so that we could get to a point of agreement. Uh, this year, the teachers' union did have 15 negotiators and 45 observers. That makes it a little bit more challenging with the dynamics. But when I look back um, during the pandemic, I'm proud of what we did in our education system. We poured millions of dollars into our buildings, millions of dollars into the Chromebooks. We provided every possible opportunity for our teachers, for example, after they came back to work. 368 teachers were allowed accommodations to teach from home. Uh, I felt that we worked very, very well with our teachers, uh, the rank and file teachers, and I know uh, a number of them uh, sport this by sign on their lawn, so they're not following the leadership necessarily on this one. Council Mahoney, two minutes. Thank you very much. I started my political career, if you want to call it a career, in the school committee. I actually have a day job too, but in the school committee. And I ran for school committee because of my children and because of the parents I knew, because we didn't have representation on the school committee with regards to our parents and being able to be a voice for them was important to me. I have always been a fierce advocate for our public schools, introducing full free day kindergarten when it was being on the table to be cut by this administration, I explained the math and why it was a bad choice. We saved full day kindergarten. But what I can tell you in this campaign, I'm very, very proud of the endorsement of the Quincy Education Association. You see, what they were fighting for was something that's so basic and everybody has the right to, even in the private sector, and that was the right to stay home with their children when they have babies or if they adopt a child. Right now, or before this contract, they could stay home for six weeks using their sick leave. What was different was the police and the fire could use 12 weeks of their sick leave. So it was not equitable. 95% of the women are women who work in the, in the school system. It's really very basic what they were asking for. And this administration took almost one year to be able to close down those negotiations and finally agree. 3% was what everybody got paid in every union across the board. That's what the fight was about, was, was maternity leave. And I'd like to remind all of those unions that at the city council when we were doing the budget, a 33% raise is being offered to this mayor's administration a $50,000 raise, but you could only afford a 3% raise for the union people, our police, our fire, 
our teachers, and we still Thank have you, unions Counselor. that are not done negotiating. Thank you, Councillor. Mayor Coke, 30 seconds. I'm extremely proud of how we funded our school system over the last 16 years. It's been a, uh, a real time of flourishment in the classroom in our system. We're on our fifth new school. Uh, we're working now and about to open a new learning center for students with autism. Absolutely beautiful program for families to keep their children in the city without having to travel. My opponent voted against that project as well. I'm proud of our record with our Quincy Public Schools. Are there disagreements at times? Absolutely, and that's healthy. Thank you, Mayor. We've now reached a portion of the debate where the candidates will pose a question to each other. First, Council Mahoney, a question for Mayor Koch. Thank you very much. Mayor Koch, your campaign has been consistently sending out negative and misleading information about my record, false conflations about my votes, and whisper campaigns about key issues. The residents of the city of Quincy are questioning why aren't you leading with what you, you've done? The reality of it is, is that this mayor leans far right when it comes to and is, is anti-choice. He's anti-marriage equality, and he's against an LGBTQA. He has had scandalous, salacious scandals question, and nepotism, and he's had any in the city of Quincy. The question stands: What is your record on those issues? The voters of the city of Quincy want to know. Mayor, two minutes. Thank you. Uh, I have a very clear record. In fact. I've been in elective office 16 years. You've been in 18 years. My record has been one of pushing a vision forward. It's been one of building. Yours has been one of tearing down negativity, voting against everything. When the city is safe, everybody wins. When the schools are thriving, everybody wins. We pick up the trash, we plow the streets, we do all of those things more effectively uh, than most communities around us do. Uh, we've enjoyed a good relationship with uh, every nonprofit and organization in the city. In fact, during the pandemic, we took good care of those folks in need. The first calls we made when the federal money came in was to the food pantries, to folks that were needing fuel, folks that couldn't pay their rent. It didn't matter whether they were gay, straight, black, or white. We have a policy where we treat everybody with respect and dignity in everything we do. And I'd certainly challenge anyone to see anything different than that. Show me any time anyone has had an issue with me uh, as far as treatment goes with government. I remind my departments all the time, when somebody comes to that counter, treat them like it's your mother or your brother or your grandmother. That may be the only interaction they have with their local government. And I want them walking away saying, I'm proud of my local government. So I'm proud of our record here in Quincy. Councilor Mahoney, please, thank you, thank you. Councilor Mahoney, you. two minutes. Thank you. You know, the issue of anti-choice was brought to this administration. The fact of the matter is, is once Roe versus Wade was overturned, the state of Massachusetts does stand for women's rights and reproductive rights. There are women in this city that don't feel safe by having a leader who is so far to the right that they make them feel uncomfortable. When it comes to actually people who do not agree with this mayor, almost all of his materials are going out saying that he will work with everybody. He'll work with everybody until you don't agree with him. Because when you don't agree with this administration, then you get labeled as a naysayer, negative, or somebody who pushes things down. I can tell you that when I've questioned things, it was for the betterment of the city of Quincy and for the taxpayers who live here. I can promise you when I am your mayor, I will represent in an inclusive way everybody who lives here in the city of Quincy and you will not have to fear that I will put my religious beliefs before you. Thank you, please, thank you. Mayor Cole, 30 seconds. I'm, uh, I'm a little confused. I don't know if, she's, if my opponent's running for state representative or congressman, but a mayor has no vote on that issue. I do have a personal belief, and it's based on my faith, 
uh, and I believe that, but Massachusetts, the law is baked. This is not an issue at all, uh, so I'm not really sure why my opponent brings it up other than to attack my religious belief. Thank you, Mayor. Please. I, again, I ask for the audience respect for our candidates and hold your applause, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm so, oh, you want your 30-second extra? All right. Uh, Council Mahoney's going to use her extra 30-second rebuttal time. Councilor? This has become a local issue because the federal government overturned Roe versus Wade. When we have a leader who's saying that he would rather lose his seat than be pro-choice, then we have a problem in the city of Quincy. To protect our rights, we all have to take a stand. This is a medical issue that should be saved between a woman and her doctor, and it should not be something that's coming into play. But it came into play when you decided to hold rallies at our stadium with our police officers protecting Thank you, you. Thank you. Our next question will come from Mayor Koch for a question for Councilor Mahoney. Mayor Koch. Councilor Mahoney, um, there's been a number of programs, projects that we presented to the City Council, uh, and you vote more often than not, no. I would ask you, would any of them, if you had the vote back, for example, the track which is used by hundreds of kids each and every day, uh, we see it down on Faxon Field, beautiful location, beautiful facility, would you like to have that vote back? Council Mahoney, two minutes. Thank you very much. So that was quite some time ago. And the school committee actually voted no to put that track there. That track is not an MAA regulated track. That track was supposed to go into the stadium when you were the park department head. And again, you had some problems with numbers. You mismeasured. So instead, it ended up over in that location. It was not me who sued the city. It was the citizens of the city of Quincy. And we brought it to court because the right was for the school committee vote. And we won that in court. We won that because you were told you couldn't do it, but you wanted to do it in any way. You have a track record for that, Mayor Koch. You had the same issue with the Monroe Building when it came to Quincy College. But when you were getting ready for a vote of no at the city council, you took your, your, sand your, your, your bucket and your, and, your, and your shovel, and you went over and you used the COVID money. And you weren't transparent about how you're using the COVID money. When I'm mayor, what I can promise you is that we will be transparent about the projects that we are doing. We will make sure that you are understanding what's happening with your tax dollars, and we will work to ensure that everybody in the city of Quincy has the right information and that we can all build the community that we want. Thank you, Councillor. Mayor, two minutes. Sure. Uh, Please. First of all, the, the track was moved out of the stadium because the state-of-the-art track wouldn't fit. That's, that's the reality. Uh, that's the fact. So when a new location was decided upon, in fact, in a previous election, my opponent wanted pageant, and we uh, had uh, desired the facts and field site. So the, the reality is it wouldn't fit in the stadium. And what we did in the stadium opened up sports for females. It was, used to be just an old football stadium. We included the soccer. We included lacrosse for both boys and girls. So we opened up a first-class stadium for both genders, which uh, I'm extremely proud of that work. As far as the Monroe Building goes, uh, it wasn't, uh, I couldn't be, think of anything more transparent. We had a major press conference with Congressman Lynch standing by my side, uh, supporting the, the purchase of the Monroe Building for future educational use of Quincy College. So uh, I, I think that uh, the facts bear out that we have been extremely transparent and, and open to thoughts uh, from folks. So that decision, long-term decision of the college as we put off, as we hit a little bit of speed bump, with the college, but the college is back on track. It's doing very, very well. And I'm very proud of the work at Quincy College and the folks that that college serves, which is a heavy minority community. And I believe that college is important for those folks going forward that may not otherwise seek further education uh, and otherwise have challenges going forward being a citizen and making a living. So I'm proud of that project for sure. Thank you, Mayor. Council Mahoney, 30 seconds. Thank you. So I'm glad that we know that you did mismeasure at the stadium. 
And the fact that it couldn't go to pageant, we do now have a somewhat of a walking track at pageant, so you protected pageant. But instead, we put it in an area that flooded, and the neighbors actually had to deal with flooding issues after the track went there. And when we did talk about the Monroe Building, I'd like to also mention that Congressman Lynch was also on the wrong side of the theme of flood maps, and we had to retract and go back to do those things. So many elected officials make mistakes. I think a mistake was made when the COVID money was used to purchase a building you, for a college Thank and you, a city hall. All right. We will now return back to our panel reporters to pose more questions. We'll return back to Joe Catalano of Quincy Access Television for a question for Councillor Mahoney. Councillor Mahoney, uh, sticking with the issue of Quincy College, if we could for a moment, you've said you believe Quincy College should be part of the state college system. Why do you feel that way? And if elected, how would you work to make that happen? Thank you very much. From the very beginning when Quincy College came before the City Council, and I'd like to back up for a second, before it became before the City Council, it was in our city budget. There was a negative $2.5 million in our revenues because the college could not pay their health care. It wasn't brought to us by the mayor. It wasn't brought to us by a chief financial officer. I noticed it in the budget, and I raised a question. Transparency does matter. I would think that we would want to have that be the first thing you're telling us about the budget. So Quincy College was in trouble. And the city of Quincy, having the only municipality college in the whole country, is taking care of it. That means the taxpayers of the city of Quincy are paying for that college. 80% of the kids that go to that college do not reside in the city of Quincy. I didn't realize how rich the city of Quincy was. I know how hard people are struggling to stay in our city. The right place for Quincy College, which was when it was developed years ago, was to be part of the state system. But it hasn't become that. Instead, it's become a place where a lot of people have jobs and a lot of kids are not getting what they're expected they're getting. And that's when they had a problem with the nursing program. The endowment process, we know that there's an education cliff. In the, in the whole country, we know that. Colleges are going out of business that don't have endowments. The reality of it is, is that if we build that building for Quincy College, we'll be paying for it forever. And we should be working with the state for it to become part of the state program. And when I am mayor, we will work with the state to do that. It's costing the city of Quincy right now in the budget with the health care and the retirement between five and seven million dollars. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Mayor Koch, two minutes. I think your numbers are off. Uh, there you go again. Um, in reality, the department, uh, the college is a department of the city like every other department in Quincy. And the city of Quincy covers the pension in health care costs for every department. Some communities, they do it differently. School budgets in some communities have the health care in the school budget. We don't do it that way. Quincy College has a 65-year history. It was started by the city uh, many years ago, 65 years ago, to give kids an opportunity to go on to figure out what they want to do. Not everybody knows at 18 years old what they want to do. Uh, and this has provided countless opportunities for generations of Quincy people, but also people from in the region. Colleges are under duress right now because they're fighting for the same students. This college has a unique niche area that I think will be uh, there for a long time. And I certainly don't want to see the college go away. In fact, if you coupled it with the state system, it was talked about many years ago, the state would just close it and suggest you go to Massasoit or UMass Boston. So the city would lose that Quincy College in the heart of Quincy Center, which I also think it brings vibrancy uh, to Quincy Center uh, and certainly adds to the whole experience of people enjoying the stores and restaurants as well. So uh, I'm proud of the work of Quincy College and we'll, uh, the college is a commuter school for the most part. That's why location right, night, right near the red line makes so much sense. The other challenge the college has had over the years is they go from place to place because if a landlord wants to change up the building, the college has to move. If we go down this road, the Quincy College is permanently in a building there, then the college would pay the rent on it, which would cover the debt service on the building. Again, simple math. Thank you, Mayor. Councilor, 30 seconds. Thank you very much. So once again, let's think about the city of Quincy was in charge of a hospital. We don't have a hospital anymore. The city of Quincy wants to be in charge of a college. You, the taxpayers, will be paying for it, and we won't have that college for long either. It needs to be part of the state. It can stay here in Quincy. It will not be able to sustain itself, and nor will we be able to sustain the cost that that building is going to come with. 
We do not have unlimited resources here in the city of Quincy, and we have to be very careful about the choices we're making so that we can represent you. Thank you, Councillor. We return back now to Scott Jackson from the Quincy Sun with a question for Mayor Koch. Mayor Koch, uh, last week the City Council approved a resolution introduced by Council Mahoney to reconstitute the Quarry Hills Advisory Committee by the end of the year. Um, do you plan on doing so? Sure, I'm open to that. Uh, the Advisory Committee, uh, its primary role when it was first established was through the construction of the Quarry Hills. Uh, and then as the Quarry Hills got finished up and began to operate on a regular basis, there weren't any issues really at hand, and it kind of dissolved uh, a number of years ago. But I'm certainly open to reconstituting it, uh, absolutely. I, I also think we, we have a very uh, good Park and Recreation Board that maybe they could take a larger role uh, in the oversight of the Quarry Hills uh, lease as well. Uh, keep in mind that that was a landfill. That was a dump that the city took, put in an RFP out, and uh, the O'Connell Company came in, built the course, provided incredible opportunity for a lot of people not only to play golf, but we have ball fields up there, little league fields, soccer fields that is also maintained as part of the program. So at the time, we were paying $250,000 a year to provide a leachate system for the dump. Now we have an incredible asset up there that the public enjoys, and the city enjoys in, in the revenue of that. Now, that lease was signed by previous mayors, uh, but I am very confident that that facility for many years to come is going to continue to provide incredible recreational opportunities as well as providing a robust revenue source each and every year, which we've used for our DPW-related items. Thank you, Mayor. Council Mahoney, two minutes. Thank you very much. Obviously, I think this is a really important thing that needs to be reestablished for the oversight of Quarry Hills. Um, we wouldn't probably have known half the things that we know are going up at Quarry Hills had the 99-year lease not come before us. Items such as the budget, when we asked for an audit of that, we haven't had an audit. They still haven't produced an audit. They had to go out and hire somebody to do the audit after they put the 99-year lease in front of us. That's something that the Oversight Committee would be able to be reviewing. Also, when it comes to decisions that were being made, in 2015, the mayor unilaterally made a decision about the golf carts. The city of Quincy were getting 10% of the revenues off the golf carts. Well, I guess the golf carts were costing too much, and instead of having the golf carts revenue come to the taxpayers of the city of Quincy, we had that coming as a gift in kind to be able to have events for the mayor up at Granite Links. That's not a good deal for the city of Quincy. That's why we need the oversight there. The 99-year lease is not over. It can come back at any time, and what we really need to do is understand what's happening. That land was a dump. It's not a dump anymore. It has 30 years left on the lease, and we, the city of Quincy, own that land. If we give it away, we're not going to have use to it. Right now, it's a private golf course that we can go up and we can buy a drink, eat our dinner, and we can't walk on the site. As far as the ball fields, they have not been maintained, even though we're paying somebody over $100,000 in oversight money. We didn't know about the issues. The parking lot is a disgrace up there. I'm not sure who's paying attention, but we need that group to be able to make sure we're representing again the taxpayers of the city of Quincy. When I am your mayor, we will make sure that we're making the deals that we're making for the taxpayers of the city of Quincy are the best deals that we can make for you. And we will present a full package to you showing you the benefits and how it is going to improve your quality of life. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Mayor Koch, 30 seconds. Certainly. Um, thank you, Joe, um, John. The reality is this program at Quarry Hills has been a huge success. And I'm certainly proud of what previous mayors decided to do with that land. We wouldn't be having this discussion today about lease extensions if it was not a success. And when something is put before the council, the council then has a role. They ask questions, amend, vote up, vote down, and that's, that's the role of the city council. I don't know that we need an outside oversight group. Uh, we have the city council that's part of their fiduciary responsibility to do that. Thank you, Mayor. Our final question tonight will come from Peter Blandino of the Patriot Ledger with a question for Councillor Mahoney. Councillor Mahoney, um, in your opponent's 16 years as mayor, the city has 
seen a lot of changes. Over that same period of time, Quincy voters have reelected him uh, five times, which suggests that a substantial portion of them see that those changes as progress. Why should Quincy uh, voters change course now? Thank you very much. I think when it comes to the city of Quincy and why change is needed now is that 16 years and one third of our downtown being done, one quarter of our streets being completed. You know, I approved $100 million for our roads and our infrastructure, but that was during my six years on the city council. The mayor has been the mayor for 16 years. What I can tell you is you can drive to Wallston Cemetery and you will have the smoothest ride of your entire life, but as soon as you drive out of there, you're gonna have to go to your local mechanic to have your, your car fixed because the roads are that bad. 16 years, a quarter of the roads are done. 16 years, one third of our downtown is done. But there are many special projects that have come into play. 16 years, and we have bonded $1.8 billion. That's $100 million a year underneath this leadership. We could have done all of our roads four times over. We need new leadership because we need somebody who's going to be able to come in and market the city and be able to really have the foresight of what our community wants and make sure we're listening to the people and the residents of the city of Quincy to build smart and affordable for today's generation and for the next generation and to ensure that our seniors can afford to stay here and age gracefully here. And our taxpayers deserve, with all of the development that we've had, to have a residential tax break. They deserve to get something back because they're being taxed out of our city. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Mayor Coke, two minutes. Well, I hope the uh, voters have the wisdom to see in the fact to reelect me once again because the voters of the city have seen tremendous progress. I hear time and time again from unsolicited uh, comments from people how beautiful the city looks. They've never been prouder to be from Quincy. The improvements in every neighborhood of our city with our parks being revamped in every neighborhood. Uh, the roads, the pipes, the underground. It was tradition before to paint the streets. You do 60, 70 streets a year with half an inch overlay. We rebuild the whole infrastructure now, the pipes, the gas, the water, and then rebuild the street. That wasn't ever done before. And that's, that's tremendous progress because those streets won't have to be touched for 30 or 40 years going forward. We're on our fifth new school. We brought in about $300 million of federal and state dollars. That's because of the relationships we have. I'm proud to have the endorsement of Governor, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Governor Baker, Lieutenant Governor Polito, Attorney General Campbell, State Treasurer Goldberg, because I've worked with each and every one of them making things better for the residents of Quincy and the people of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So I think we've made tremendous progress, but we have more work to do. I want to get the Performing Arts Center out of the ground. I want to get the animal shelter finished up. I want to get the police station finished up and continue the work on the roads. And uh, we just heard some great news at the planning board about the next phase of our Quincy Center, which is going to provide a, can't mention the name, uh, a specialty grocer. Uh, we'll also be having an announcement next week about a new medical facility in downtown Quincy. These things take time. These things take relationships to build and put together. And I'm proud of the record of that. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Please, thank you. Council Mahoney, 30 seconds. 16 years and one third done, and every election we get promises. I can't tell you how many times we've been promised for a grocery store. And I'm so glad that the police officer was walking in the parking lot that day and talking about what they think is going to be Trader Joe's. I actually think maybe those police officers were talking probably more likely about the scandalous behavior that was happening in their own departments at the police department. The reality of it is very simple. The reality of it is very simple. We need Please. new leadership in City Hall because we've waited too long. Everybody Thank around you, us has developed. The Dorchester is about to take, Thank you, to take it right out from underneath our, our heels. So Councilor, let's Thank be you. Real. Mayor, your 30 second bonus time. Thank you. Um, these things take time and work, and I want to thank the City Council for voting for the District Improvement Financing, which is laying the groundwork for the next phase. Once again, my opponent voted against the District Improvement Financing. That is the piece that lays the groundwork now for us to do the garage, to bring the grocer in, and bring the medical office building in. 
and there's more to come, and I'm proud of where we're at. I get frustrated sometimes it doesn't happen fast enough, but we have investors knocking on the door in this city because of the foundation that we built, the Hancock Adams Common, the Kilroy, and so many other aspects of the downtown. People want to be Thank here. You, Mayor. Thank you. Well, we've reached the final portion of our debate, the candidate closing statements. Each candidate will have one minute for their statement. As a reminder, the order tonight was determined by reversing the order of the first debate on September 25th. As such, Mayor Koch, you have one minute for your closing statement. Thank you, and thank you again for sponsoring tonight, and thank you to the public who have greeted me at their doors, opened their doors, and, and I've listened to their concerns. To me, the choice is clear. You have two public officials, one that's been in office for 18 years with no record to show off. I've been mayor for 16 years and the record is clear. The improvements are all across the city and that's because we work with our colleagues, something my opponent has trouble doing. Work with the council, the school committee, our congressional delegation, our state delegation, again, bringing in hundreds of millions of dollars to help us transform this city and that's what it was. Remember what the downtown looked like 16 years ago. We've made tremendous progress. If you think we're better off than we were four years ago, I ask for your vote. Thank you so much. Thank you. Council Mahoney, one minute for your closing statement, please. Thank you very much. I want to thank you for the forum tonight, for the people who are here and the people who are tuning in, and I want to thank Mayor Koch. The city is ready for change. We need somebody who's going to come in and not only stand up, but deliver for the city of Quincy. 16 years, one third done, one quarter done with your roads. The reality of it is, is that we need to do more. We're going to lose out on opportunities just like we did in the past to other communities getting those amenities that we want. We were promised things that haven't come and it doesn't take 16 years in other communities. We need to get that done now. I can promise you when, you're a mayor, when I'm your mayor, I will do smart development, smart budgeting. You will know where your tax dollars are going. We will work together to build the community for our generation and for the next generation, and you will be able to afford to live here. I look forward to earning your vote. Come to votemahoney.com to learn more about our plan, and thank you so very much, and I look forward to earning your vote between now and November 7th. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor. That concludes tonight's debate. Thank you to both candidates for agreeing to participate in both the debates sponsored by Quincy Access Television. We appreciate your participation. Thank you to our panel of Joe Catalano, Scott Jackson, and Peter Blandino. Thank you to the Quincy Public Schools, Quincy High School, including Tom Doucette, the custodial staff, and security staff for their assistance tonight. Thank you to our in-person audience, and thank you for watching at home. If you would like to vote in the City of Quincy municipal election but not yet registered, the deadline to register is Saturday, October 28th at 5 p.m. Early voting begins on Saturday, October 28th from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Quincy City Hall and will also be held Monday, October 30th through Friday, November 3rd from 8.30 to 4.30 also at Quincy City Hall. If you would like to vote by mail, mail and ballots can be requested at the City Clerk's Office. Requests must be made by Tuesday, October 31st. Absentee ballots can also be applied for by the clerk's office by Monday, November 6th at noon. And finally, polling locations will be open on November 7th from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the 31 precincts throughout the city of Quincy for in-person voting. To find your polling place, call the city clerk's office at 617-376-1144 or visit the clerk's page on the city of Quincy website, quincyma.gov. My name is Jonathan Collier of Quincy Access Television. Thank you for watching tonight. <laughs>